Many musical instruments you are familiar with are made of pipes of different length in which a sound wave travels back and forth. Some instruments have flared ends, mouthpieces and reeds. In some, the pipe has a set of finger holes and in others the pipe may be bent into the shape of a coil. But they are still pipes. As such, they are subject to the physical rules that govern the propagation of sound in air. Our experiment is designed to give you an understanding of how pipes behave and to help you make the connection between the properties of simple pipes and the sound made by more complicated brass and woodwind instruments. In some respects, pipes behave almost like strings. When you excite the air inside the pipe at certain frequencies, you'll see standing waves similar to the mode of the strings. You will study the change in oscillation when one end of the pipe is closed off. You will also find that pipes with finger holes show quite different properties. In particular, the modes are not equally spaced. The setup of this lab consists of a wooden sound box which is padded with foam on the sides to reduce the interference from outside. In this box, you can place the graduated pipe and measure the pressure variations inside the pipe using a mic. The mic can be moved along the length of the pipe. To generate the modes in the pipe, a small speaker is placed at the end of the pipe. The frequency of the sound emitted by the speaker can be set by the function generator. We will first find the modes of an open pipe. For certain frequencies, the wave traveling down the pipe adds constructively to the wave reflected from the end of the pipe, thus creating standing waves which is also called resonance. To monitor the motion of the air column, we detect the pressure variations inside the pipe with the microphone. The amplitude of the microphone signal measured by the oscilloscope reflects the sound amplitude within the pipe, rather than sound coming from the speaker. Begin by adjusting the scales on the oscilloscope such that you can clearly observe the signal coming from the microphone. When the pipe resonates, you will notice a heightened response on the oscilloscope. This is how you can tell that you have reached a node. Next, you will repeat the same procedure with pipes of different length and different diameter. For pipes with the same length but different diameter, you should be able to see the difference in the acoustic length of the pipes. On a pipe organ, the base pipes are closed at one end. Closing one end not only lowers the fundamental frequency but also changes the pattern of overtones. All the overtone frequencies are still integer multiple of the fundamental, but they are ordered as 3 times, 5 times, 7 times, and so on. Take the pipe you started out with and close it at the end that is away from the speaker. Place the microphone inside the pipe near the closed end and measure the fundamental and the first three overtones.